Welcome to 360 on History. Humans have expressed themselves through various forms, starting with pictograms such as handprints, cave art and pictures that represented animals or plants that they saw around them. But how did we get from there to the plethora of languages, scripts and alphabets that we see around us? Well, here is the story. Thousands of years of expression on cave walls, on stones and on shells were followed by word-based writing systems and sound-based syllabic writing systems, which are basically written symbols that represent syllables that make up words. A symbol typically represents a consonant sound followed by a vowel sound or just a vowel alone. To our knowledge, based on archaeological artifacts, Full writing systems seem to be invented at least four times in history, all of them independently. The first indication of writing we have is from Mesopotamia, which is present-day Iraq. Here, some people known as the Sumerians developed a complex writing system known as cuneiform, representing the sounds of their language, Sumerian. And this was between 3400 and 3300 BC. From around 2900 BC, they used reed styli to emboss marks on clay tablets. And these marks are almost like, you know, the marks of birds' feet on clay on on the beach. The Sumerian used this for long-distance communication, for trade and for keeping accounts. Over the years, the process was standardized and simplified. The symbols, which were read from top to bottom initially, started to be read from left to right. Originally, the wedge-shaped marks that made up cuneiform had a direct connection with the object to which they were referring. But over the years, this connection was lost as they lost their pictorial essence and became even more simplified. When Sargon, king of the Akkadians, conquered Sumer in 2400 BC, things changed drastically. The Akkadians were a northern Semitic people who had been using cuneiform to write their own language for centuries. Sargon built a huge empire from present-day Lebanon to the Persian Gulf. And with that empire, cuneiform spread eventually being used by at least 15 different languages in some way or other, lasting for centuries. The last datable document in cuneiform is an astronomical text from 75 AD. Almost at the same time as the Sumerians, the Egyptians invented that most famous of all ancient writing systems, the hieroglyphs, at around 3200 BC. They also used the system for trade as well as accounting. Thousands upon thousands of clay tablets have been found that represent products brought, bought or sold and ivory tablets that were used as labels for grave goods. The Egyptians carved the hieroglyphs as a display script, such as on walls of temples and tombs, but they also wrote in ink using reed brushes and this was the priestly script or what was known as hieratic, used by royal and temple administrations. Both systems became more complex over the centuries and developed a full range of characters. Both hieratic and hieroglyphic writings were subsequently used in other languages, such as that of the Kingdom of Kush in Sudan. Hieroglyphs have also been found in Lars Giel complex in Somaliland. These are independent from the hieroglyphic script found in Egypt and have yet to be deciphered. We were eventually able to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphs due to the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in 1799. It had text in Greek, hieroglyphs and the Egyptian script known as the Demotic script on it. Cuneiform texts were deciphered due to the inscription on a rock relief on Mount Behistun in Iran. It had three versions of the same text written in three different cuneiform script languages, 
Old Persian, Elamite and Babylonian. These were deciphered in 1838. The Minoan civilization in Crete developed its own hieroglyphic script in 2000 BC and then in 1700 BC their linear A script was developed. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world in China, we come to the Shang dynasty, who by 1300 BC had a writing system used for divination on animal bones. These oracle bones recorded questions to ancestors about crop rotation, childbirth and medical issues, even toothache. Archaeologists have been able to find over 150,000 oracle bones, which use 4,500 different symbols, some resulting in Chinese characters used today. However, a majority of the forms found on oracle bones are undeciphered as the language changed over centuries in function and form. The region between Mexico and Costa Rica, known as Mesoamerica, appears to have developed writing around 900 BC. Cultures such as the Maya, Aztec, Mixtecs and even earlier ones such as the Olmecs and Zapotecs used their own writing systems. The Indus Valley Civilization in Pakistan and India that goes back to 7000 BC also had their own writing, which has not yet been deciphered. There are over 5000 inscribed artifacts with 400 unique symbols found around from that area. Wooden tablets have been found in Rapa Nui or Easter Island, which are also as yet undeciphered. So, since 7000 BC, there have been systems of writing across the globe, some we have deciphered and which have helped us to understand the life and times of the people who wrote them. With that, we come to the alphabet, a system that is used by so many languages. This too starts with Egypt in around 2700 BC, when Egyptian writing already had 22 hieroglyphs to represent syllables with a single consonant of their language and a vowel or no vowel supplied by the native speaker. By 1700 BC, a script started being developed in central Egypt by, or perhaps for, Semitic workers. It is thought that this was based on Egyptian hieroglyphs. New research from January 2021 says that Canaanite miners in the Sinai, unversed in hieroglyphs and unable to speak Egyptian, were inspired by the pictorial writing they saw. They started transforming a hieroglyph into a letter, and other letters were drawn from life until they could represent their entire language in written form. In the Wadi al Hole or ter Terrible Valley, a cliff face depicts a graffiti written by non native Egyptian speakers, again taking elements of Egyptian writing and adapting them to sounds in their own language. So, for example, an existing hieroglyph for water was a wavy line that stood for N, the initial character for the pictogram for water. And this was used to stand for the initial sound of their own word for water, Mayem. This would eventually become our letter M. The hieroglyph for ox is Aleph and this became the letter A by just using the first character. The hieroglyph for house is Bet, and this became the letter B. If you put Aleph and Bet together, what do you get? Alphabet. This proto sinaitic system eventually travelled to Phoenicia, which is modern-day Lebanon, Syria and Israel, where those intrepid seafarers, the Phoenicians, developed it into the first semblance of what we see as our alphabet, but only with consonants. They did not have vowels. So, alphabets are writing systems for individual characters for both consonants and vowels, like the Romance languages and Korean. Abjads are vowelless scripts or vowelless characters 
such as in Aramaic, Arabic, Hebrew and Syriac. Abugidas are different character sets representing combinations of a consonant with the vowel sound attached, such as in Indian Devanagari. The same Phoenician script also developed into vowelless South Arabian alphabet from which the Gair script was developed in the Horn of Africa in around 8th or 9th century BC. And this is still used in Ethiopian Eritrea today. The Phoenician script also went eastward to India to develop into De Devanagari, Tibetan, Thai and Khmer and even nor to the north influencing Mongolian and Uyghur. Although it went from those early Canaanite, Canaanite migrant workers in Egypt to the rest of the world, initially it remained uh, in a small area around the Mediterranean for around 600 years, years after its invention. Then around 1200 BC, the big empires collapsed in what is known as the Bronze Age Collapse, giving rise to small city-states where local languages were used to govern. In the Canaan, that area of Lebanon, South Syria and Israel, they spoke the Semitic dialects, which they started writing using the alphabet from Egypt. So, coming back to the Phoenicians, they developed this school system from the initial proto sinaitic language that was much simpler, much more versatile from the other two prevailing systems, the hieroglyphics and the cuneiforms. It had only about 24 letters and was easy enough for common traders to learn. Also, because it recorded words phenomically, it would be, could be used to write down many different languages. As the Phoenicians spread all over the Mediterranean, this script spread and eventually got to Greece. This is where it became the alphabet that we know. The Greeks added vowels by taking letters that did not represent sounds that existed in Greek and changed them to represent vowels. And this was done in about 800 BC. And because there were many variations of the Greek alphabet initially, many different alphabets evolved from it. The Greeks carried this to Italy and it became Latin, the language of the Roman Empire. As that empire spread, so did Latin and the alphabet. Although Latin eventually died down, the alphabet was used in all of its descendant Romance languages and then for other languages in Europe, including Cyrillic in Russia. Fantastic, isn't it? Please subscribe, join on social media and check out the website 360onhistory.com. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.